It is um, Saturday night, January 30th. Um, I'm just talking to you guys about the uh, Doge play and Wall Street bets and Shamath and CNBC and all this craziness that's going on right now, guys. So um, there's a lot of people, a lot of people that are, that are sitting here acting like they know more than everybody and telling people that Doge is a total joke, that it's a total scam, that everybody that's doing this is stupid. Guys, these are the same people that told you the same thing about Bitcoin, guys. These are the same people that told you the same thing about Ethereum. These are the same people that told you the same thing about a laundry list of other things. I promise you Tesla would be another one. But yet I've sat here and been the biggest advocate for Bitcoin. I've been the biggest advocate for Tesla. I've been the biggest advocate for Ethereum and a laundry list of other things, different sectors that they, the quote, the air quotes, they, the smart ones, the ones that are on TV and the ones that are in power. Guys, this is a manipulation game. We live in a manipulation world. Everything you watch on TV is manipulated and bullshit. They have a reason, a tactical, systematic reason for everything that they say and do. You don't hear good news on the news because good news doesn't sell. This world works off of advertising. Chama is roasting people, roasting them, trying to show people and open up their eyes to what this world really is. Somebody once said, when the game's rigged, the only way to win is to rig it better. Well, the game's been rigged for over, since it's been here, the game's been rigged. And we figured out how to rig it better. The only difference was what we did wasn't illegal. We took out GameStop, guys. We didn't take out GameStop. We actually made GameStop a Fortune 500 company. What we did was take down Citron and Melvin Capital, which unleashed a whole laundry list of domino effect that scams coming out of the woodworks left and right you got the white house so scared that obviously they're in bed with everybody in in wall street the fact that the white house has to call robin hood and has to call voyager and has to call all these other networks all these other platforms i should say that trade and let them know hey guys you're only allowed to sell nobody's allowed to buy anymore what kind of absolute rhetoric, malarkey, whatever you want to call it, is that? They are, they, they are literally showing their ass to the entire country and we're just standing around. We're watching them break the law right in our face and I'm not going to say we're not doing anything about it because this is what this whole entire movement is about. But so far, we've done nothing about it. And we can't hold them accountable. We're not, we are not the government. We can't govern the way they act. So we just take it and get screwed. It's ridiculous. So to recap, don't believe what you hear on the news. Every single person, guys, that's on the news has a hidden agenda. Every single news network is owned by somebody. That somebody that owns the news network has vested interests in different things that they invest in. So they control the media and tell them what to report and not to report. Do you know how many good things happened last week with different companies? So many great things. You didn't hear a word about none of that. I didn't. Even, I couldn't even watch CNBC last week or Fox News or anything during the day to help myself out day trading for the week because the news was straight trash all week. All they talked about was GameStop. Everybody that came on TV, all they want to know is about GameStop because they're so ass hurt that they got beat at their own game that they're going around and trying to make us look like the bad guy now. The, the fact that they even have the audacity to interview Chamath and, and ask him those loaded questions they're asking him about, 
Do you really think this is right? Do you really, morally, how do you feel? Is GameStop really a company that should be valued at that? The fact that they're asking them those questions when they allow people to come on and pump their company, that's literally what the program is. The program is literally bring on a CEO, watch the stock go up as soon as they start talking if they like what they're saying, or you already know that Jim Cramer doesn't like the guy he's about to talk to, so he's gonna roast him on it and the stock's gonna drop. They are the masters of market manipulation, yet they wanna sit here and bitch and cry and whine and complain. It is unreal. We should not take this shit. And we're not gonna take this shit. We've already taken down one. Now they're borrowing money from other places. And guess what? All they're gonna do is keep borrowing money. The money that these guys got is long. It's longer than anything that we've got, but it ain't gonna be longer than everything that we're gonna have in the future. So we've got to hold tight, guys. You've got to have conviction in what we're doing. This whole Dogecoin thing, if you can't tell, Elon is behind it, Chamath is behind it, Wall Street Bets is behind it. The entire world and general public that is the quote-unquote stupid money, the quote-unquote small retail investor, you know, the guy that doesn't mean shit to the market, even though all the people that are highly invested in the market and have a disgusting amount of money, their money is all smart money. But yet the people who actually take the time to do research and figure things out and pick companies better than a hedge fund. I mean, my God, guys, do you do you guys see the returns that hedge funds get? Look at go look at BlackRock. They've got more money than anybody in a hedge fund. I believe in the world, I know for sure in the United States, and I, I'm pretty sure it's the world. You, you, do you know what kind of returns BlackRock got last year and the year before and the year before? I don't know that BlackRock's ever returned more than 50%. I think this past year it was 20 something. I don't know these numbers off the top of the, my head. What I do know is that I can go and pick one damn stock and have 100% conviction that that one stock that I pick is gonna go and return better than these experts that create hedge funds and take all your money and charge you fees to give you your measly 20%, 30%, even 50% is measly. This isn't the market of your grandfather. You don't have to read a newspaper to figure out about a company. You don't have to go to the company to go get documentation to figure out what the hell's going on. At my fingertips, I have a phone that has internet and I can look and research anything that I need to on a company now, just like in the past, how all of the big firms and the institutions, that was the leg up that you got. That was why you paid them a fee because you couldn't do all those things in the past. Who are all the people that are talking on TV? Who are all the figureheads? Who are all the people on the radio? These are all older people that are feeding you the bullshit about we're dumb money. We're small retail investors. This is a short-term fad. These people don't know what they're doing. Listen, guys. Anytime you beat somebody at their own game and they're a sore loser... They turn into a hater instantly. They start, they start pumping jealousy out because they're insecure with themselves that you beat them at something. So then they go and they, they use it against you and they try to make you look like the bad guy. Guys, that's bullshit. When I get beat at something, I accept my loss and I figure out why I got beat and I work at whatever it is that was my weakness that allowed me to get beat so that I don't get beat again. And I don't go bitch and complain at the person that beat me. I'm not a little whiny, complaining little bitch. Like Trump has been, like Citron has been, like Melvin Capital has been, like CNBC has been, like every damn person on Wall Street has been with the exception of the dudes that got our back and are trying to level the playing field, named Elon Musk, 
named Shamat, named Cohen from GameStop, the CEO of Chewy that knew exactly what he was doing when he bought this company. I told people to go long on GameStop the minute he bought it. It worked out. I didn't even need to be in on that short squeeze. It worked out. We've been rolling pre we've been rolling options on GameStop since Cohen bought it. And when that first pop happened, I wish I would have held the whole time, but anybody that does really doesn't know how to play the market. So I was layered in seven, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you name it. I was in every strike that was available before that craziness happened and it got squeezed. When I saw the first pop on Monday, I decided it was a good time to sell. Why not? I've been rolling those things over and over and over. They were at that point, probably tens of thousands of percent. That's not something you hold on to unless you have no idea what you're doing in the stock market because you will get caught with your pants down, bent over, and not have a clue what the hell happened to you if you think you're gonna ride anything and know where to get out. Or if you think that you know where the bottom is. You're gonna get killed, I promise you. There's rules to this game, I teach you guys the rules, and the only people that ever lose is the people that break the rules. So, circle back. What's going on right now? Doge, there's believers and non-believers. There's a hell of a lot more believers than there are non-believers. I can tell you that much. Social media controls this world now, guys. The media has always controlled the world. Now social media controls the world because it's much easier, faster, and accessible for everybody to use and to connect instantly with the snap of a finger. What just happened in the stock market with the White House? Like, it, I, You guys have no idea how disgusted I am right now. I don't care if it was Trump in there, Biden in there. It doesn't matter. The fact that the White House, and, and it was Biden, so this is on Biden's watch, call to have them shut down being able to buy something? That is fraud right in your face. Guys, I had almost half a million dollars ready to cash out. And they wouldn't let me cash out. That is fraud. They straight robbed me, and not just me, millions upon millions of other people. And we just sit back and we get to take it on the chin. If we were to rob somebody of $100, well, I don't know, I, I'm, not a, I'm not an attorney. Whatever the limit is that actually gets you in trouble. Maybe it's $5,000 to be called grand theft. I don't know, we've got attorneys on here. I'm sure you guys know off the top of your head. But let's just say, theoretically speaking, if you go and rob somebody for $5,000, I'm sure you're going to do a bit in jail and it ain't going to be a short one either. But yet they can rob all of us of billions of dollars just last night, last week, constantly. Screw me out of cashing out for almost half a million dollars off a doge pump like that in 30 minutes. I was ready to get out. I couldn't. Do I think it's gonna go to a dollar? Quite possibly. Am I gonna not take some profits along the way and just wait to see if it goes to a dollar and hope I become a billionaire? Absolutely not. That's absolutely stupid. I don't know where it's gonna go. You don't know where it's gonna go. Nobody knows where it's gonna go. It could very well go to $10. I, I do not mean that as a joke whatsoever. But I'm not gonna wait till $10 to cash out. That's a sucker's game. You're the fish, they got you on the hook. We've already beat them at their game, guys. They're scared now because we know how to play their game. So here's my opinion on what's going on right now. Number one, I've been in stock forever. I've been in Bitcoin and Ethereum forever, but that's it. I've never been anywhere else in the crypto market. I've started to dive into crypto and we're killing it, man. I doubled my crypto account trading in like two weeks. I'm going to get much more heavily into crypto because of the manipulation and the fraud that's going on in the stock market. Until the stock market gets its shit together, I don't want nothing to do with it. What good does it do for me to make a half a million dollars in a play if I can't cash it out? And then on top of it, hold my order to sell hold my order to sell as pending, not let me cancel it, and then put my order through after you crash the shit down below where I bought it. That is 
robbery. It's beyond grand theft. These people all deserve to be locked up. And not just for a few years. They shouldn't even see the damn light of day. They robbed the entire world. So the stock market, I believe it's going to dramatically change if they don't get their shit together real fast. We can have a monster crash in the stock market. Monster. Worse than the one that we had. Am I scared? Not even the least bit. I don't invest in a single company that is going to get affected by the stock market crashing long term. Sure, they might wipe me out at 80% right then and there. But if I'm in stock, I'm only in stock for one reason. I'm in stock because I'm in it for the long term. I'm not in it to get in and out of it. I've got a portfolio for that. It's my trading portfolio. I've got two trading portfolios. And then I've got a third one now that's a crypto trading portfolio. That's what those are for is to trade. My stock is the hold. I don't buy a stock looking to trade. I buy a stock because it's for my retirement and it's going to go in an IRA so that I don't have to pay capital gains on it. So we've got to look at the big picture here. And the big picture to me right now is the stock market is dangerous, guys. Believe me, we got some stuff we're going to play next week. We're, we're planning on wiping out some more hedge funds next week. Uh, let's see. We're going to short. Sun, uh, not short. I apologize. We're going to squeeze Sundial. We're going to squeeze Tootsie Roll. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of all of them. I've got them written down. We're even talking about squeezing game all the way to like $800 possibly. Like they, And the reason why is because they allowed them to shut us out, let the hedge funds go and reposition themselves while we're locked out, let them go around and play and figure out how they're going to make their money back. So they let them go and reposition themselves, basically betting again so that they could get their money back. So if we want, we can drive this thing to a thousand and push them out again. And then they doubled down and got double dip screwed. It's totally possible, guys. We are now, as Chamath put it, we're now the biggest hedge fund in the world. We, the retail investor, when we work together as a team, we are the biggest hedge fund in the world by a long shot. And when you're the biggest hedge fund in the world, you get to do what you want to do with the market. They're coming in now talking about, oh, uh, we might not let people short stock anymore. We need to talk about this. Oh, uh, we might not allow this. We might not allow. They're, they're already talking about all the things that they might not allow, which are the things they've been doing to us since the beginning of time. And the minute we use it against them, they're looking at changing regulations. If that's not illegal, I don't know what is. If those people don't belong to be in jail, I don't know who does. So stock market, a little scary right now. Anything I'm invested in, it can crash. I could care less. I'll go buy more. The businesses I'm invested in aren't going out of business because of fraud in our government or because people are going to crypto. I'm invested in things that are going to win no matter what happens. And if it goes down 80%, fantastic. That's a fire sale. Wayfair went down to like 20 bucks and I was in it deep. At about, a, I think I was in it deep at around 78 bucks and it went down to like 20 bucks. I went and loaded up on Wayfair because I'm a speculator. I research. I can figure things out. There was nothing fundamentally wrong with Wayfair. All Corona did was accelerate it because it's an e-commerce. So I looked at that as a massive opportunity to buy more. I loaded up on it. I got my dollar price average down to like $30 and the thing's up like $300. I, don't, I couldn't even tell you what it is off the top of my head, guys. Anything that's in... Anything that's in my portfolios, I don't even look at it. I look at it like once a year. I could care less what it's doing. It can go up and down and up and down. I don't care. I look at it once a year and I reassess it once a year. And if I need to take something out and replace it with something else, because that something has already hit the end of its growth, then that's fine. I'll do that. But I don't need to look at it every day. I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to look at it every month. If I did my homework right the first time, the only way that I'm going to mess up is because of fraud. That happened to me once and I still didn't lose. I was in Luck and Coffee. I did all my research about Luck and Coffee. 
They were a fantastic company looking to take market share from Starbucks in a country that's got, I don't know, 10, how many, how many more times China has at least 10 more times people as us? Something like that, maybe less, I don't know. Long story short, they could have put Starbucks out of business. They were cooking their books, man. That ain't something that we can see. That ain't something we can know. That ain't something we can predict. That just happens. Well, I got in at like five. I think I rode the thing up to 38 or 40 bucks. And then by the time it started taking, I got out at like $30. So my worst long-term bet ever was a company that was cooking the books, got absolutely destroyed and delisted. And I took it for, what would that be? A 600% winner? Guys, if you're in the stock market, like to actually purchase equity and you get scared when your equity goes down, you are in the wrong business. You are not an investor. You, my friend, are a sheep that listens to the media, doesn't do their own research, goes with the crowd and gets destroyed. We're in Doge right now, a lot of us. Guys, this is a world effort. Tune out all the BS noise. It's gonna happen. They've locked everybody out of their accounts. If that doesn't tell you the writing on the wall of how scared they are, they've locked, they've shut down your accounts telling you anything you deposit, you no longer have instant access to buy crypto. Hmm, interesting, we always have. But now all of a sudden we don't? And guess what? The hedge funds, they can't even play this play. They can't get in Doge. So let me tell you what I think is really going on. Those guys lost their ass. Those guys are upset. Who wouldn't be upset? I'd be upset. What we did was absolutely phenomenally beautiful. But if I was in their shoes, I'd be upset. But I also would know that I'm a scumbag and I had it coming. So I wouldn't be making a big fit about it like they are. That's for damn sure. I would just chalk it up as well. That game worked for 20 years and I took an L. I better go and figure out what I'm going to do for the next 20 years. Again, if you get beat, figure out why you got beat, fix your weakness, get stronger, move on. If you can't do that, you're not, a, you're not a good investor. You're a sheep. So my opinion is they know what's going on. They know that we plan on globally pumping this thing to a dollar or more and make printing, coining millionaire after millionaire after billionaire of young people that have a purpose and that are sick and tired of our country and their government and their biased laws, their the racial inequality. They're sick of it. Women are sick of being underpaid and they're still underprivileged. Like everybody's sick of it. This is not a country with equal opportunity. This isn't the land of the free. This is the land of smoke and mirrors where there's a puppet master pulling strings and does whatever the hell he wants to do to us. We are still slaves, whether you want to admit it or not. If you can't admit it, then you are not that intelligent. I'm sorry to say that, but it's the facts. We are slaves to our country. They own us. This is a quote unquote free market. If it's a free market and the land of the free, why can't I buy and sell my securities on my time when I want? Because it's not. It's rigged and it's bullshit. And we beat them at their own game and they're crying about it. So, nobody can get in until Tuesday. Why do you think that is? Let's speculate. I'm a speculator. This is what I do for a living. Here's what I've come up with. We just watched Wolf on Wall Street the other night as a group. Do you remember what, uh, you know, my rabbit holes? I got all my rabbit holes. What's a rabbit hole? Well, a rabbit hole is when a hedge fund manager on the inside who knows all the information because it's his information that he's not supposed to give away and has access to about every company that they invest in, maybe that they IPO'd, whatever it might be. They go and talk to their buddies, give them a stack of cash, let them know what option to buy and win so that they can go and make a hundred times their money. It ain't in their name, it's under their buddy's name. Their buddy goes and pays capital gains on it and then they split the money with them. 
That's been going on since the beginning of time. So, let's circle back around. I think they shut everybody out because they are actively, actively finding as many rabbit holes as they can so that they can get in on this doge play. Because they just got their ass handed to them and they need to figure out how they're going to rebound. That's my opinion, guys. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I've never been wrong about anything I've speculated in the past when it comes to the market. Not once. Well, I apologize. Yes, I was about lucky, but I still made 600%. So that's what I think is going on. Come Tuesday, when everybody gets unlocked, I think the same shit that just happened is going to happen again. Everything's going to freeze up. You're not going to be able to buy or sell. They're going to hold your orders, blah, blah. It's going to happen again, guys. And you know what's going to happen when everybody's locked out? Somehow, magically, the hedge funds that are playing with the billions of dollars secretly under their big whale names, somehow they'll be on a platform that doesn't get locked out. They'll be able to sell after the pump, and they'll be able to recoup every loss plus a lot more than they just took in the stock market, and then they'll still have the upper hand in the stock market. The only reason why we're doing this doge pump is so that we can put the hands back in the people's hands where it belongs so that we can make choices of what's right and wrong for us. Because our country has no morals. There's none. So people like Elon, people that care about this world, people like Chamath, people that want to leave a legacy and leave an imprint of positivity on this world, like I do, spread love, wealth, wisdom. That is what Elon does. That's what Chamath does. That's what I do. That's what I'm going to plug my homie, James Lopez. If you haven't checked him out on Instagram, it's at fatherhood is lit. Absolutely amazing, dude. Most people look at him and probably think he's just some dude from New York, from, from the hood, from the Bronx. And he is, but he's a lot more than that. He's an entrepreneur. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's a serial uh, startup investor, angel investor. Got a phenomenal investment group of, of famous people around him. He still actively consults for all kinds of big shots. And he's got one message, man. He goes out and spreads love to the kids everywhere. He gets so much stuff donated, so much stuff from companies sent to him because he's got such a big social media presence and he just goes and blesses everybody with it. That's what I'm about, man. That's what he's about. That's what Elon's about. That's what Chamath is about. Well, it's our turn now, guys. So we're going to take this doge pump. Guess what? Next week on Thursday, there's already a global movement. We are literally going to all buy at the exact same second. The only way that's not going to work is because the whales in the stock market are already illegally buying shares through their buddies or other names or family or friends or who knows, you know, at this point, they might buy it through their own name. Like they might be that stupid. Who knows? But they're positioning themselves right now so that they can make all that money. And then when the pump happens, they'll get out and they'll be done. And the only way that this can't work on Thursday next week is because they've accumulated so such a vast amount of doge before Thursday that they've got more ammo to sell off then it's going to come in to buy. I don't think that's going to happen. I could be wrong, but I don't think that's going to happen. I believe that in order for them to position themselves that big, they would have to move Doge up a significant amount, allowing all of us to make a very significant profit anyway before everybody's unlocked on Tuesday and before everybody wants to pump in on Thursday. So I've looked at this from all angles. I don't see anything wrong with the play that we're in. There's people panicking all over. I'm down like 18% right now, I think. I'm in it like deep, like deep, deep, deep. 
but I'm not worried. I'm not concerned. I'm not scared. If it was an option and it expired on Friday, yeah, I would be shitting a brick right now. But this isn't an option. It doesn't expire. It doesn't decay. If the price consolidates, I don't lose money. Guys, this is a wait and see game. And if you're only down 18% or 20% or 30%, and I mean, honestly, even 50% and you're worried, you should not be in. You shouldn't even be in the stock market. This is a volatile stock market. Crypto is the most volatile thing on planet Earth. If you know anything about the stock market, you would know that the biotech industry is the most volatile thing on planet Earth. Well, guess what? The crypto market is worse. I've been in plays in biotech where I was down 99% on options that were going to expire that I had had for a year and they were going to expire that week and some wild stuff would happen. They would get an approval for a drug. The FDA would clear this or that and boom, the thing shoots up 500% and I make a ridiculous amount of money on my option the week before it expires. So you have to have conviction if you're gonna go in something. You should not play anything ever, ever, just because somebody told you to, ever. That's just dumb. And you should definitely not just play something that somebody told you that you don't understand whatsoever and go deep as hell in it and position size like a fool. I told everybody my plan. I told everybody I'm not playing by the rules because this is bigger than me. My godfather has been in this game his whole life and told me that he's never seen anything even relatively close to what's going on this past week and right now and still into next week and with Doge. So we're in unprecedented times. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, never in my wildest dreams did I think that I can make a half a million dollars and not be able to cash out. I didn't see that coming. I couldn't predict that. There's no way. I mean, I, I could now, because as usual, guys, history always repeats itself. That's just a fact. So now that's why I'm guessing that when they unlock things and they start driving it through the roof, I'm guessing they're going to go crash the systems again. And then when they unlock, they'll go bananas again. So if you want to get in on Doge, don't get in more than you can afford to lose. Number one, it's the same with any single play you make. The minute it's out of your hand, you should be okay with losing every penny when it's an investment. You should be a good enough investor to know the odds of whatever you're going in on going to zero are next to none. You should not follow anybody blindly ever. I encourage you guys, my members, not to follow my lead because I don't want you sweating bricks. I don't want you sitting there scared. I don't, I don't want you staring at a screen for 108 hours waiting for the thing to move one cent. Like I already did that guys. My Lord, that was the worst night ever. I had never been in a play that long in my life and I'm still in it. So it's still the longest play I've ever been in in my life and it'll probably be the longest play I'll ever be in, in my life. So scale back, man. Learn how to position size so that you're not sweating. Guys, I'm in this thing way bigger than I normally play. Probably 10 times bigger at this point than I would normally play a position size. And I'm not sweating. So I don't think you should be sweating. And the last thing, guys, Nobody's lost anything. I keep hearing people say, oh, I've lost $5,000. Guys, I'm down like $80,000 right now. I'm not, I haven't lost $80,000. I'm down $80,000. You don't lose anything until you sell. This isn't an option that expires. You've lost nothing unless you sell. And if you sell, then you're a dummy and you deserve to lose. That's all there is to it. So there's the spill. There's where we're at. I'll tell you right now. I'll give everybody on this YouTube video a lesson in plugging out along the way, progressively locking in gains so that you don't get screwed by a pump and dump. 
Right now, our average price is like right below two cents for most of us. A lot of us that's moved up significantly because we kept buying and buying and buying every dip. I've got no problem with people that buy the dip, especially in crypto where it's just a ridiculously volatile. So once this thing gets above, it's, it's already almost touched nine cents. Without a doubt, it should, it, it should at least get back there. Without a doubt, that, that's, I'm very, very, very convicted that it'll get back to where the high was, which was 0 0.0885. So I know that. So I know that a good place for me to take profits is probably to be really safe would be at like six cents. But I'm not really safe. That's overly safe. I'm going to set in my plug at 0 0.0795 right before eight cents. I'm not gonna set it at eight cents because then it just holds down the level and it rejects it a bunch. Put it right before, make sure that you get it sold. Then I know 10 cents is gonna be a really hard level if it gets there. So I'm gonna have a plug at 0 0.0975. I know that if it breaks 10 cents, it's gonna fly. It ain't gonna just break 10 cents and sit there. If it does consolidate at 10 cents, then it most likely means it's gonna fail. If it's gonna go, it should get through 10 cents and it should go within the first hour of holding, it should absolutely go. So from there, it should easily go 100%. So knowing that it should easily go 100%, 15 cents is a very safe play once it's already up there. I'm not saying put your your limit order sell right now at 15 cents, that's crazy. We gotta get there first, guys. But I'll have another plug at 15 cents. I'll have another plug right below 20 cents. I'll have another plug right below a quarter. I'll have another plug right before 50 cents. And if I still have my, I'll still have some position left. I promise you that I never sell all my runners, but I will probably have made 15 times my money by the time we get there easily. Actually, yeah, 15, yeah, about 25, 15, 25 times our money, maybe somewhere around there. So at that point, whatever's left, you let it run. I think I got in this thing all together for like 15 million doge now. And I've got limit orders set up already to sell so that I don't have to watch this thing because I am sick and tired of watching it. And I'm not the least bit worried about it. It's just a time thing. We got to have patience. You're not going to win this trade if you don't have patience. This is this was supposed to be a fast trade. Now it's not. We're already positioned in it. It would be stupid to exit and try, try to guess because that's literally all you're doing. There is no rhyme or reason why Dogecoin is going to do what Dogecoin is going to do. There's no technicals to it. So even reading the charts is kind of worthless because it's not ordinary. Reading charts helps with stock because the stock's always, again, history. What does it do? It repeats itself. So if you learn how to play a stock, you learn that it repeats itself. And you can identify that and you can win constantly. Well, crypto hasn't been around long enough for us to see what repeats itself. Not quite, it's almost there. For things that have been around a while, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's already there. I told everybody exactly what's gonna happen this year after the, after the halving. I told them exactly where it's gonna go. And that's all based off of me analyzing history and what happened the last halving. Let me repeat myself again for all the people that think I'm crazy. I keep saying it. They all said I was crazy when I told them it would hit 50 grand. Now they all realize, oh, damn, that's going to happen. It should have happened last year. It would have happened last year. But there was a lot of craziness last year. A lot of craziness. So anyway, my prediction was 50 by the end of last year. Didn't happen. And my prediction now is that it's going to be... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be conservative this time. That way I don't say something and not hit it because I don't like doing that. That doesn't happen very often at all. So I'm going to say by the end of this year, it's going to be $110,000. To me, 
I am speaking extremely conservative right now. I'm not going to tell you what my number is because I don't need to hear people saying, oh, you said it's going to be this much blood. No, here, so let me be clear. I'm saying without a shadow of a doubt that by the end of next year, I believe it'll be $110,000 a coin, a token. I believe that it could get there much, much faster, but let's just say the end of the year. That way I know I'm going to win. Guys, do you guys have any questions? Anything at all? All right. Well, I guess I was speaking uh, perfect. Hey, Anthony. Yeah. I, I missed uh, half of it. You were talking about Thursday. Everybody's going to jump in on Thursday. Yeah, there's a global effort, and we'll get we'll go over this stuff later. It's a long ways away, but there's a global effort for literally every single person in the world that wants Doge to go in at the exact same time and buy. Man, if we orchestrate that, who knows where that thing can go, man? If everybody in the world were to buy some Doge at the same time, that thing can go to ten dollars with the blink of an eye, man. So this is all about, this is a new day of age, man. This is all about coming together as people and helping one another out to beat the system because the system's been beating us our whole lives. The only way we're going to beat the system is together. We can't beat it apart. It, it, we're not, we're not, there's no single person here that's powerful enough to do it. We've got to unite as a people to overtake the system. Is there any other questions? Okay, guys, um, we're going to all start watching Boiler Room. I'm going to have somebody set up a Zoom. Uh, it's going to be kind of funky if we try to watch it on Zoom. Apparently, there will be a lot of background music. So we'll get a Zoom set up. We'll get the link over here pretty soon. Um, it'll be fun. We'll act like we're all watching a movie together. So we'll all get on a Zoom call and uh, just have our face hanging out on Zoom. We can talk during the movie. We'll all hit play at the same time. Anybody that wants in. Let's hang out virtually, 4XP Minions. Boiler room coming at you shortly. Uh, just get it ready. Be ready to go. I'll be hitting y'all up soon, man. God bless you guys. Spread love, wealth, wisdom. And have a great night, man.